Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On. This is another episode of Match Preview Battle. This week for the Manchester United game with Reese James against Emma Story. But first of all, we've actually had two Match Preview Battle results since we last recorded, so I've got to give you an update on those results no, and we don't. the league table. No, the first we don't. one was the Holland game, which was Craig against Reese. Uh, Craig got six points Four. in that one. Uh, points, of course, gained for getting predictions right and team selection right. Uh, Reese got eight points ha! for that. Beating Craig, that gave him three points in the league table for that, and uh, Craig zero. Then for the Liverpool match preview battle, which was Craig versus Emma, uh, that was a draw. 13 points each. Reese is happy with that because even though he result. didn't play, it, it's good for him. So they got one point each for that. So that currently leaves the match preview battle league table as follows. In third place is Emma with two points and a plus 34 goal difference. <laughs> In second place is Craig with four points and a plus 45 goal difference. Good goal difference for Craig then, second place. Top of the table is Reese James, six points and quite a low goal difference, yes. plus 28. It seems to me maybe the fixtures have worked out quite well for. Uh, well, for I've never Craig, done a. Uh, uh, Reese. I've Reece never done all the match This is his, this is his is first Leicester. one. He's only done international ones, basically. So he's been quite fortunate on that, but bad news so for I the goal difference. But it means that, yeah, I haven't been able to predict other Reece, results you're like, yet. you're like the Leicester of... Yes. A lot of people are saying that. You are like, <laughs> the, you're like the Leicester. <laughs> the boring Leicester. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so if you haven't seen a match preview battle before, this is what's going to happen. Uh, both Reese and Emma are going to predict the... Uh, result of the game, who will score the team selection as well, and they get one point for anything they get right in all those things, and then at the end, they are going to predict the results of the other teams around us, the top five or six, uh, and then tell us how they think that's going to affect the league table, which they can also earn points for. So let's make a start with the prediction and scorers in the Tottenham Hotspur versus Manchester United game at White Hart Lane. Ladies first, Emma Story. Right. Going positive again. 3-1. Three, one. Three. I back our boys. And I back our crowd as well. I think um, we're going to really lift them. We're going to be their 12th man. Yeah. And I am confident big that atmosphere. this is going to be a big win for us. Huge so, do I go my scorers now? Yeah, do, I do scorers my scorers now. now. So, yeah. I think obviously the boy Kane is going to tuck one away for us. Mm -hmm. I think Ali's going to get on the score sheet. And I'm also fancying Toby Alderweireld for a cheeky mm -hmm. header. Okay. Uh, oh. On their side, I think Marcus Rashford's going to uh, oh. unfortunately find the net for them. But you know. I think Alderweireld might keep Rashford in check. I hope so, anyway. Okay, mm -hmm. interesting. So, we've got 3 1 with a Kane, Ali, and Toby to score and Marcus Rashford. Reese James, what about you? I very nearly put the exact same thing, <laughs> except the United scorer. But in the end, and even I nearly put Toby down. In the end, I went for 2-1, more conservative. Kane and Ali to score for us, and Anthony Martial to score for them. Ooh, good, okay, so some points available on the table for that. Okay, let's go straight to team selection now, Reese. I'm gonna to come to you first. What is the Tottenham team going to be? Okay, very difficult. We don't know what the situation is with Eric Lamella. That's true. It's it's Tuesday when we're filming this. Like, we won't go out till Thursday or Friday, we don't but know for sure. we don't know what the injury situation is. So it's a bit of a shot in the dark. I'm taking a risk, it. and... As I say this, I do have a very strong feeling that Jan's going to start. But I have put Larice, Walker, Toby, Kevin Vimmer and Rose, Lamella, Dyer, Dembele, Eriksen, Ali and Kane. OK, so pretty much the same team what except the... Lamella in for Son. Yes, it's the same team we get to play Liverpool, yeah, but Lamella comes in for Son, which okay. is exactly what I thought we lacked. OK, and Emma's story? I have gone for exactly the same because I think Lamella's only kind of a precautionary thing, so I think he'll be fit. Yeah. And Jan, yes, I know he's on the verge of fitness, but I don't gonna think rush him Poch is going to mm. chuck him back in when it's Man United that we're playing as the yeah. first game. Lamella so. has actually, uh, I believe, posted some Instagram pictures of him uh, just looking like he's in football kit. And Perfect. He's, and, he's, and he said that it, it's just a little injury, I think. Is what right, OK. Cool. So that's Cool. Okay, yeah. um, this is the section now where we uh, we go back into the memory banks. Um, what memories, personal memories, do you have of some Spurs Manchester United games? Emma, I'm going to come to you first. Oh, no, go to Reese first because he's much cheerier than mine. Right. <laughs> what is the point of being a host if, if you can't just get we'll told do this, mate. Exactly, you don't need to be here. Exactly what to do. All right, Reese, well, you're cheery one. 2012, Spurs at Old Trafford. I was in New York watching in a sports bar that was kind of evenly populated between Spurs fans and United fans. I went there with my dad and brother, obviously expecting that to be a waste of a day in New York. Mm -hmm. Going to watch us lose as we hadn't won there for 23 years. And then 
Jan Vertonghen yeah. runs through mm. the entire United squad and smashes it and it the whole squad, it. all 25 of them. <laughs> the whole squad, yeah, he ran through that. It was, it was actually a bit embarrassing. Uh, and then, obviously, Clint Dempsey, my boy, and Gareth Bale, and we win 3-2, and Bale makes... Was, it, was that Bale's idiot. one where he took uh, around Ferdinand on, and on, finished on his right foot? Yeah, left. and Ferdinand oh, looked was, so slow. And that old. was Sam goal. Yeah, that, really that was, was like when, when like your granddad falls over and you go, oh, we're at this stage now. It was like, real Ferdinand, you, you, you've got to stop. You've got to it's stop so basically, it's, uh, it's like when your granddad dies. Is that what you're saying? It's like when your granddad dies a little bit. But yeah, wow. and you're there going, yeah. No, uh, and, and while well, he's cheering, while it was he's great. collapsed, uh, a, a, a Welsh wizard takes the ball around him and slots yeah. it home. My granddad was Welsh. Uh, well, okay. what a surprise with a name like Rhys James, if that is your real name. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, Emma, story for your slightly less cheery. Oh, well, actually, no, I've, I've got two now because you mentioned Clint Dempsey has reminded me of a very positive one. The equaliser. Yes, yeah. the equaliser in the snow. The game that nearly didn't go ahead because the weather was so terrible and the pavements around White Hot Lane were so treacherous that mm. with about an hour and a half to go, they were still deciding whether we would actually be able to go to the game, which was interesting because it would have been a real mission to get mm. across London that day yeah. in the hideous weather that we had. But it did. They had did a brilliant job around the ground, got it all safe. We went in. We were losing 1-0 until literally the 90th minute. It was Fergie time and then some, and up popped Clint Dempsey in the snow. Equaliser. Deuce. Everybody went I'm a deuce. absolutely mental. It did feel a little bit like we won the league, even, the, even though deuce. we hadn't. I also remember um, Benny Asuakoti afterwards oh tweeting, boy. tweeting. Oh, that's what now I know what Fergie time is all about because oh, it yeah. was Fergie time when that Love goal was scored. Yeah. So that was my positive memory. Thanks for reminding me of that because I feel much better. But my slightly unpositive memory, which I'm pretty sure is burned into everybody's yeah. mind, go back to 2005. It might be 11 years ago. Little person called Pedro Mendes. Remember him? Pedro Miguel de Silva Mendes. Remember him for us? <laughs> remember this other guy called Roy Carroll who was in the Man United goal? Mm. Do we remember what happened? Yeah. Do we remember God, what happened? I think about I'll it tell every you day. what happened. Yeah. We were robbed. Robbed Last and then the game, wasn't it? Every day I think about uh, Carroll standing up and going, I'm going, what? What? He was what actually do you touching, he was actually you do that? touching the, back the, net. Of the net. He was touching the net when he pretended that the ball hadn't gone over the line. Uh, I also remember because I sent my stepfather my first ever angry text to him ever that night, blaming him because <laughs> he's a Man United fan, and like just going, how the f***? <laughs> just, uh, that's bleeped, by the way, I did say those words. Um, <laughs> uh, just so angry, yeah, it was really annoying, because we, like you said, you know, we hadn't won at Old Trafford for so long, and it was, you know, should have should have counted. And it also, eventually, if we'd got that three points rather than the one point, I believe we would have finished fourth in the league that season mm. compared to where we finished. But, you know, I'm over it. I'm not bitter. It only took him another five, six years to acknowledge that we need a goal line technology. But, hey, hey means we, we got owe there them. The Maybe some karma will come back <laughs> on Sunday. That would be great. Okay, and hmm. uh, what about a little stat, some kind of statistic to do with the game? Reese, am I allowed to come to you first sure, this time? Sure, sure. Um, <laughs> Harry Kane has the fifth best minutes per goals ratio in the Premier League league history for oh. people who've scored over 20 goals. Wow. Do you know who that's behind? Aguero, Henri, uh, Van Nistelrooy and Hernandez. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, am I treading on your toes if I mention that stat that he's only, I think, the third player to score 20 goals a season consecutively for any team in Premier League? Um, no. I, or something like that. So I, I think so Michael Owen never matter. did it. Scored no. 20 in a Premier League goals in a season. Um, and it's only something like I think it's Shearer and Cole or someone who have, but not many people have. Tell me how badly four, I got that players. stat wrong. <laughs> I know I've got it wrong, but there's something to do with that. But let me, let me let us know in the in the box what it is and what you think of it. Okay, Emma, what's your stat? Well, funnily enough, with carrying on with the Harry Kane mm -hmm. um, loving, um, he's actually got the most shots on target of anybody in the Premier League this season. I think it's 164 or 165, but it's something like 30 shots clear of uh, Jamie Vardy, who's in second. Ah. So we are talking really the boy. If you want yeah. someone to yeah. test the goalie, yeah. he's your man. He's, he's also also got five goals in the last three games in the league, which is good for us because we haven't scored against United in their last three is meetings. Is that right? You know. That's interesting. We were unlucky. To, to I have to say, I'm just going back to Harry Kane's shots on target. There, there is a thing with Kane where when he lines it up, you think he is going to make the keeper work. Except that kind of first half against Liverpool where he had that, he was totally oh. in his trademark position yeah. Yeah. a couple of times and you kind of are expecting him to score. And so I felt he was a was bit well jaded that against. first half. But as I, said, well. um, as I said in my five things we learned, which you will have watched, I'm sure, <laughs> um, the best thing about Harry Kane is it doesn't matter if he misses a chance or it gets blocked or whatever he still gets himself in those positions and that goal he scored in the oh what was, a goal we never really talked about it, it in our Spurbers it we won't, should talk about it it won't be up there in the goals of the season but it should be because yeah. technically brilliant uh, in, not, I can't think of another striker in the Premier League who would have scored that goal maybe Aguero had a push but 
it's his roll and his strength, and then also hit it with a bit of almost reverse swerve off his instep that went away from the keeper. Unbelievable. Uh, okay, so now we go into the um, where the bit where we predict the other results around us and how that will affect the Premier League table at the end of the weekend. This, frankly, is where these match preview battles are won. This and is lost. where I keep losing. This is where <laughs> the teams are identical. We've, our scores are pretty much the same. Yeah. Yeah. So this is where it's won and lost. People are doing all right, but um, I'm going to go to Reese first. The games, by the way, that we are predicting are West Ham versus Arsenal, Manchester City versus West Brom, and Sunderland versus Leicester. It's an interesting weekend because a few of the teams around us are playing each other. Uh, by which I just mean West Ham and Arsenal. Uh, but, <laughs> but Spurs and Man United as well. Uh, Reese, go for it. Okay. I think West Ham v Arsenal will be three-two to Arsenal. Ooh, I hope not. Last minute. A draw would be ideal. A last minute winner. I think Man City will beat West Brom 3 mm -hmm. Um Minimum. And That I doesn't think... mean if it's 4 or 5 nil, you get the points. Well, I, did, I think I said it. Um, and Sunderland will lose to Leicester in the customary score of 1 nil to mm. Leicester. Yeah, interesting. I'm hoping that Jermaine the game, Defoe, might help us out there, or DeAndre Yedlin, or both of them. Anyway, uh, Emma's story. Interesting. So, uh, I have gone the opposite way, West Ham Arsenal. I think West Ham will win 2 1. I don't want okay. West Ham to win, but that would still be better for Look, us. Look, I mean, sure. you know, no, they're just ridiculous sure. at home this season, as we unfortunately found to our cost not that long ago. I think that's a really hard game to predict. It's a very hard game Especially to predict. Especially because it's a 12 45 kickoff as well. If it was a night game, I think oh, I would definitely yeah. think that West, West Ham, Ham would, would win. It. But Arsenal don't do well at lunchtime. I've done my research, Arsenal are bad at lunchtime. So, yeah, you know, uh, I think. <laughs> Come on, I need a it's win. It's on tape now. I it's need a win. Uh, Man City, West Brom, I also think they win, win 3 nils. Right. Does this mean if I say minimum 3 nil, I'm going to get an extra point as well? If no, say maximum, so then you can definitely... Yeah. Uh, that would have to <laughs> carry on. Um, and I think I am backing our boy Jermaine to oh. do us a favour. I think it will finish Sunderland 1, Leicester 1. Did you see the thing from Jermaine earlier in the interview where he said, oh, yeah. you know, I my dream scenario is that we beat Leicester, we stay up and Tottenham win the league. I love that boy. Yeah, I'm you can all say Jermaine. stuff. We can all just say stuff, But I think, we? no, I'm not going for a win, but I think a draw. OK, and how do those results and all the results we've talked about affect your league table at the end of this weekend, please, Emma? OK, so I hope I've got all my figures right, because I think I did some wrong adding up last week, so I'm really sorry about that. Matt has never been my strong point. But I think uh, it will leave us in fifth, Manchester United on 53. In fourth, Manchester City on 57, so a bit of a gap opening up there for uh, the top four. In third... Arsenal on 58 so mm. that will suddenly become very tight between those two mm. then second the mighty Spurs uh, 65 we'll have and Leicester obviously will still be top but they'll be on 70 so the lead will be back to five points back to five points according to Emma's story I, I, I like the sound of that <laughs> Reese. Uh, okay so uh, yep yeah, United will be on the same points 53 uh, City will be on 57 in fourth in third Arsenal will be on 61 in second, Spurs will be on 65, and in first, Leicester will be on 72. Okay. Very little of change. Very little of change for Reese. Bit more neg about that uh, this more week. Neg. Let us know in the <laughs> comments box what you think the scores are going to be. Uh, what you think, the, how the league table will be affected, all of that stuff, guys. Uh, let us know what you think of match preview battles. I think they're going down quite well. There's a lot of competitiveness in this room. I have to text these guys after every result to let them know how they've done. Gets heated. It's, it's getting heated, that's for sure. Nice. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on the YouTube. YouTube. Uh, uh, drop the video a like. <laughs> Follow us on Twitter at SpurdOnTV and come on you Spurs against United. Hello, welcome to another episode of Spurverts. As usual, I am here with Emma and Craig. This week we'll be talking about the Liverpool performance and the result. Can we still win?